Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Time for a little garden tour, I guess. I'm going to take you in the greenhouse and show you how things are coming along. And they are doing quite well in here. We've had a very cool spring and early summer. Most days the temperature goes to about 23 Celsius. Very comfortable, but not exactly great garden weather. It is nice and sunny and warm today, but again, not terribly hot. But I'm going to show you around in here and a little bit of what's growing outside. And I'll finish the video up by going up to the community garden and showing you what's happening up there. Well, the tomatoes have been doing very well in here. I selected these two to show you the difference between the indeterminate and the determinate ones. This is the San Mazzano, the indeterminate variety, which will eventually go to, well, in here, about seven or eight feet, I guess, but just keep growing, I guess, if you had enough space to let it continue growing up. And I have been removing sucker growth, just like that, another one that I missed. Uh, and next to it over here, if you can see that, that is the um, variety that's just called, um, hmm. can't think of what it's called, but anyway, it's another sauce tomato, an Italian sauce tomato, uh, but it's a determinate variety, and it's pretty much reached its height. I see a sucker, sucker growth on it. A lot of people will say that when they're growing a determinate variety they don't remove the sucker growth and you get more fruit and that is true but not in my climate here um, I'd rather have less fruit and have it ripen if I let all the suckers grow and all the trusses come on it um, there'd be a long time before they all ripened at the end of the fall probably but uh, the San Marzano has set fruit I'll show you that so hopefully you can make that out. That's on that same San Marzano plant and the fruit is starting to set. Doing quite well actually. All I do is every time I'm in here and walk by the blossoms I do that and that seems to uh, get them all pollinated. I remembered the name of the second variety of tomatoes that I'm growing. The determinate variety. It's just called Roma. But once again, it's an Italian sauce tomato. I don't think they're as large as the San Marzano or when they're mature. But in de being determinate, whatever, and uh, removing a lot of the trusses, the, I uh, hmm, can't think of what that's called now. I'm losing it, I guess. A lot of the sucker growth, removing a lot of that, uh, they should ripen before the San Marzano's do. This kale has been wonderful and seems to enjoy the heat in the in the greenhouse. The variety is winter boar. I think I'm right in saying I've had five pickings off of it so far and it's ready to go there again. Very tender. Uh, I've even used it raw in salads and it's very good that way as well. Next to it is the daikon radish. I'm going to pull one for you, show you what they look like. Well, there were five daikon in this little bed, and this is the third one that I'm pulling. The other two were looking very strange. We'll see what this one looks like. Well, not too bad. This one's perfect. I'll clean it up and give you a better look at it and get the garden hose on it. But, uh, how much of that can you see? way over a foot in length, maybe 15 inches or something like that. They're very mild. Uh, I use them, the only, the only use I've found for them so far is I dice some of it up and put it in salads and whatever. Is, that's a nice straight one. The rest of them that I pulled, uh, like when you grow carrots and the ground that you're growing them in has too much organic matter, you've added too much compost, 
it'll have several roots on the thing when you pull it up quite edible but uh, strange looking well that's what the other two that I daikon that I pulled looked like I removed the top and rinsed it off with the garden house it amazes me how quickly they grow and how large they are but I do like them very much and I remember seeing them in stores years ago never bought one thinking how terribly hot that must be but they're not hot at all really and they're very crunchy and nice in a salad the cucumbers are starting to run around and are producing I had a couple yesterday that I used for sandwich last evening but they were very small the variety is uh, a European gherkin and it's one of those types of plants that has all female blossoms so there are lots of them on there but they're still relatively small gherkins don't get that large anyway four four maybe five inches long at the at the most but the ones that I picked were like oh, like you'd see in a jar of baby dills I guess but they were very tasty in the sandwich this is a French melon that I grew last year and it produced one melon and I don't know, it, it got attacked anyway when I went to pick the thing the bottom was gone out of it and it was full of ants. It smelled delicious but I didn't get to taste it. And it's doing what the plant did last year. It has produced lots of blossoms in the past week, all male. I haven't seen a single female flower on it yet. And this is the Moon and Stars watermelon. Um, no blossoms yet but I do see a number of blossom buds so there's hope that that might produce. The chili peppers of course are loving the heat in here. I have to keep them watered. Everything in here needs to be watered at least once a day. I do it in the evening but I guess the one that I'm showing you is pepperoncino, the Italian uh, hot pepper. I'm growing five varieties. I won't take you through and show you each plant again. There have been a few flowers on some of them, and I think some tiny little chilies starting to form, but the plants are looking very healthy. And the sage that overwintered in here is doing very good. I must remember to pick some of that and dry it. And this is the crazy mystery plant, which is finally in bloom. I'll try my best to zoom in on some. There they are. I think you're looking at the flowers. I don't know. Several people have suggested that it is a thing called wild cucumber, which may indeed be possible. I don't know. I've gardened here all my life. I've never seen or heard tell of a thing called wild cucumber. But then again, whatever this is, I've never seen it before other either, and how it got in my greenhouse is quite a mystery. It sends up tendrils going in all directions and I just keep ripping them off the lower part of the plant because I don't want it to get down there and get tangled up with my melons and cucumbers and whatever. But Anyway, it is in bloom. I assume the bees that are coming in here will pollinate it. As soon as I figure out what the fruit looks like that it has, it's coming out of here. But I don't know. I, the, the, the guess that makes the most sense to me, I guess, is the wild cucumber. But... Where on earth did it come from and how did it get in my greenhouse? I planted one each of the perennials that I started from seed in here in the greenhouse to see how they would do. And that is the hollyhock, which is loving the heat evidently and is, you know, magnificent the way it's growing. And out of the center it has something coming up. I don't know if it's going to bloom or not. It's either biennial or perennial, depending on which seed packet you believe in. I had two different seed packets from two different companies. One called it perennial, one called it biennial. But anyway, I did not think it would bloom first year from seed, and it hasn't yet. Maybe it won't, but in the very center there, those top leaves, there's a strange thing coming up, but it looks to me like it might be a blossom spike. And that's the black-eyed Susan, Rebecca, that I grew from seed. And as you can see, it's about to bloom. That blossom bud is about to open. And that's happening out in the garden, different places that I planted it too. So they are going to bloom first year from seed. It remains to be seen if they'll make it through the winter, so there'll be another season. But out in the garden, I will let them just go to seed and spread their seed around, which hopefully will produce more anyway. Excuse the weeds. 
This is my patch of buttercup winter squash, the large um, round green, dark green colored winter squash, the favorite around here I think of almost everybody. Any grocery store that you go in in this area, the, the display of the buttercup squash is much larger than any of the other varieties. Lots of blossom buds, but I haven't seen blossom open yet. Last year the variety that I grew was called semi-vining, and it did send out some vines, but this is just the old-fashioned variety which vines, and it's really starting to travel in all directions. The new perennial border or herbaceous border that I started is really starting to fill in nicely and some things are in bloom. I'll give you a look at those. This is the phlox that I bought. I was surprised that it started blooming as short as it is. It's probably only about a foot tall. But I just picked out the tag that came with it and read on the back of it. Maximum height is 18 inches, so 12 to 18 inches. It may, it may grow taller yet. I kind of like that idea. My problem with flocks here is we get rain and great tall blossom spikes flop over into the ground. This malva has been very pretty. It's had lots of blossoms on it. It's called a hollyhock malva. And I can see what they mean. It does sort of look like a hollyhock blossom on the thing. My issue once again here is wind and rain. I've got that one lashed up to a bamboo cane. I've ordered some uh, steel plant supports for various things in here and uh, they're on their way but they haven't arrived yet. Well, there are three varieties of grasses in this bed. This one is called the Korean feather reed grass and it's the one that is performing the best by far. The other three plants, uh, two varieties, but the other three plants are alive and growing, but they're not putting on a performance like this. Maybe they're waiting for some warmer weather, I guess. And this is the allium called Lavender Bubbles. And I'm not certain if it's supposed to be like a fall blooming thing or to bloom in the summertime, but as you can see, it has lots of blossom buds coming up on it. I don't know how long it takes before they bloom. This is a sedum called Autumn Joy, and it usually does not bloom until late August and into the fall, but it seems to be preparing to do something anyway. It has lots of blossom buds on it. Well, this is looking like a patch of weeds, because I suppose that's what it is. I grew that large flat of uh, what was called wildflower seeds, and all I did was divide it into about six sections and transplant it in this bed. And growing in the center of the bed are my eggplant. They're supposed to be a round eggplant, um, orange when they're ripe. I haven't seen any of that happening yet, but they are starting to get ready to bloom. This is one here. Hopefully they'll get up taller than the rest of the stuff. And there is one white alyssum in bloom, and this morning the very first of the California poppies. That's the first of the California poppy, and it has come up in the middle of one of the eggplants. So if the eggplant were in bloom, that would help attract pollinators, I guess. That's the hope, anyway. Well, I finished earthing up my nine containers of potatoes. For some reason, to me, they look kind of tall and spindly so far. Hopefully there will be some potatoes developed down there somewhere. Well, this is out in the area where I planted most of the uh, black-eyed Susan because I wanted to naturalize them. It's at the edge of a small parking lot where I park my truck in the wintertime. And when they're looking just as well out here as they are in the greenhouse, that one's another day or so and that'll be in full bloom. Well, I'll take you up now and show you what's happening at the community garden. Well, this is my little plot at the community garden. Six winter squash plants, and the variety this time is butternut. Buttercup at the house and butternut here. Butternut is that sort of beige-colored one that has a sort of a bulbous end on it. Uh, and this is a variety, a smaller variety of the butternut squash called nutter butter. 
supposed to weigh just a little over a pound or so a piece. And in the center I have put two um, sunflowers. If you remember the last time I grew a sunflower up here, I grew one of the, I think maybe it was called Giant Russian or something, good heavens, the thing grew at least 12 feet tall and was enormous. These are just called tall, so I don't think they're going to be quite that spectacular, but uh, they're doing okay and so are the squash plants, they're starting to send out runners. I haven't seen a blossom here yet. This is the plot next door to mine. Uh, I know both the owners. <laughs> the lady is the director here at the lodge. And her husband plows the snow on my property in the wintertime. So, good friends of mine, both of them. And they're growing potatoes. They had great success here last year with their potato crop. I don't know if they've got more than one kind in there or not, but the little name tag that I can see says Yukon Gold. It wasn't that long ago that they came up, and they're already nice large plants. And this bed of strawberries is also owned by the lodge. Uh, and they've been picking out of it for quite some time now. And there's some that are almost ripe there again. I'm not sure who grows the garlic, but this is at least the second year for it, and they always have really nice looking garlic plants. It's got a lot of scapes on it though, and well I guess I can see where some have been removed, but they haven't removed all of them. And I've always been told remove the scapes and you'll get larger bulbs. Any truth in that or not, I don't know. I didn't even plant garlic this year. And the lodge is still decorated for Canada Day, which was July the 1st, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about. Canada Day is our national holiday. And uh, Angel and I went for a walk on a trail and got caught up in the back end of the little parade here that they have. I was thought it was going to be forever getting me home, but the parade did an interesting thing. When it came to the lodge, it went up around the lodge so that the residents could be out on the other side and, and uh, enjoy the parade and then came back down the, there's, a, there's like two driveways, one that I drive up to come to the community garden and then the main one that comes up to the lodge. But they, they did a circle around the lodge so that the residents could enjoy it. Again, I don't know whose plot it is, but another good looking crop of potatoes. I think the syrup garden also belongs to the lodge. And I see that they have uh, put a tomato plant over in the corner and not sure, I think there might be some small squash plants in the center there, but each corner has a, an herb in it anyway, chives and uh, lavender, and I see a mint in one corner there. They still have the straw bale gardens, and I'm not certain which of the gardeners use them. I have never tried it, but those squash plants are looking as good or better than the ones I'm growing. Of course, I'm using the Ruth Stoat method, which is similar. There is some soil down below, but I, uh, I take these uh, bales when they're all spent in the spring and going to go on the garbage heap and I put one or two of them in my bed to carry on using the Ruth Stoke method. This one seems to be all cucumbers. Not sure of the variety. I don't see any yellow flowers there yet, but I do see some blossom buds. The last section here has a few beans in it, some lettuce, and a section that I think looks like watermelon. The shape of the leaves are like the watermelon that uh, I have growing in the coop, and, and the coop in the greenhouse anyway. And down at the far end there is more beans. Well, I'll leave you with a panoramic view of the view from the community garden and the Campobello Lodge. Thank you very much for watching.